Mike, out of all the aircraft that are showing up here at Sebring this year, the 2012 U.S. Sport Aviation Expo, we see a number of similar categories, the Cubba likes, the, you know, the Cessna clones, so forth and so on, and it's so nice to see something that doesn't look like anything else, but more important, epitomizes the true sport nature of sport flying, nothing like a sweet little biplane. Tell us about the FK-12. The FK-12 Comet is uh, built by FK Light Planes, factories in Krosno, Poland. The headquarters is actually in Speyer, Germany, near Stuttgart. It is what we call a modern take on a classic aircraft. It is a, a true composite aircraft. A little bit of all kinds of materials go into the building of it. It's a great flying airplane. It meets the light sport category. And when we have the Lycoming engine, new AEIO 233, it'll be aerobatic qualified. Now aerobatic qualified, does that mean sustained inverted? It will be sustained inverted, not unlimited inverted. We'll have a header tank to allow a few minutes of inverted fuel, but it'll have inverted oil system on the engine, which will go pretty much as long as you want for that. Now, you mentioned that the airplane is a true composite. There's a number of different construction methods in there. Can you go through the airplane and give us a rough rundown of how it's constructed? The fuselage from the firewall back to about the rear instrument panel is all 4130 steel tube. After that, it's aluminum tube. It's covered with a lightweight fiberglass and carbon fiber cowling, and then that's all covered with seconite in a polyurethane finish. The wings are built up of two spars, forward and aft. Each one of those is made out of carbon fiber. The leading edge D-tube is a carbon fiber with fiberglass wingtips. The ribs are a hard, low-density foam with plywood cap strips, and again, that's all covered with seconite. The tail surfaces and the flaperons are aluminum leading and trailing edges, again with the foam ribs with the plywood cap strips. Well, obviously when we talk aerobatics, one of the questions that comes up is how strong is the airframe? Plus six, minus three. And that'll be at about a 1,200 to 1,230 pound gross weight. Actually, we could do it all the way up to 1,320. The limiting factor for the max gross weight on this airplane is actually going to be the clean stall speed required by light sport of 45 knots. Strength-wise, it's not a problem. It's that clean uh, stall speed is what's going to limit our weight. It's open cockpit, it's closed cockpit, it's single cockpit, it's dual cockpit, and it's wings out and wings folded. Talk about a convertible airplane. Oh yeah, it's got a little something for everything. Well, you just saw it takes us, Mitch and I, less than five minutes to fold the wings. It's a little longer to unfold them because putting the pins in is a little harder than taking them out, but not much longer. You have the four different canopy configurations. On a beautiful day like this, the two-hole open cockpit's the way to go. But it takes about five minutes to go to the two-hole closed cockpit if it's a little chilly out. And if you just want to go by yourself and want to go fast, we have two different versions of the single that takes about 20 minutes to change that out because you've got to change the cockpit combing. But you pick up about 15 knots over the two-hole open. We call that the racing canopy. What are the overall numbers for the airplane otherwise? I cruise with a two-seat bubble canopy, about 112 knots. Empty weight is about 650 pounds with that on it. Again, the final numbers for the max gross weight we don't have yet, but right now we're calling 1,190. So right now we've got about a 540 useful pound load. It should go up as we do the testing for the aerobatics once we get the Lycoming engine in it. Now, as I understand, the aircraft is available both in experimental, build-it-yourself, as well as LSA configurations? Well, right now in the U.S., it's just as an SLSA factory built. They have a kit that they sell in Europe, but it would not meet the 49-51%. Okay. And eventually we'll sell an ELSA kit, but we have to get the builder's manual up to ASTM standards. And that's taken a little while to do because we want to make sure it's done right. But eventually that will come. With the Rotax like this one has, it's about $120,000. Okay. With the Lycoming, it'll be approximately $135,000. And availability? Availability, well, we have two of them being delivered sometime in the next month. And then after that, probably about a four-month lead time to get one. Now, who's your typical customer? Have you been able to get enough data to identify who really is attracted to an airplane like this? A lot of the folks that we're initially getting are folks that fly sportsman type aerobatics and they're looking at maybe not wanting to renew their medical right. and they want something that they can fly and continue to do some aerobatics with. That's probably the biggest interest we have right now. We've also got a lot of folks who like light like sport don't want to do aerobatics, but just want a biplane to fly. Mm -hmm. Especially with the Rotax engine, this is a, a great airplane for that. Just fly around, open cockpit, and get the biplane experience, which I really enjoy doing that on this thing too. We're looking forward to trying it for ourselves, and we appreciate your time.
Aero TV is brought to you by the DFC-90 all-digital attitude-based autopilot delivers significant performance and safety improvements over previous generation systems. Its innovative flight envelope protection guards against autopilot-induced stalls, and the straight and level mode provides one-button recovery from unusual attitudes for an added measure of safety. Immensely popular within the Cirrus community, the DFC-90 is now being made available for a growing list of aircraft including Piper Matrix and Mirage, Cessna 182s, and Beach Bonanzas and Barons. Fly with confidence. Fly with DFC-90.